also no history of recurrent chest infection blitz discoloration of finger toes and lips difficulty in breathing no history of failure to thrive or poor weight gain no history of loss of consciousness or dizziness no history of long standing or recurrent fever or any limb swelling or abdominal distension or less local chest trauma or local infection or no history of any uh, skin region or rash and no history of blood stain sputum antenatal and birth is see mother was registered at 12 week pregnancy had five antenatal visits and this is oral medication and no history of fever rash smoking alcohol and any drug intake any major illness during pregnancy and child was born at full term normal vaginal delivery with birth weight approx 2.8 kg and administered vaccination at birth and subsequently at regular interval and uh, currently is vaccinated for age as uh, last vaccination taken at the age of 5 months and developmental history it plays with children of same age group and studies in second standard and for dietary history jalis receives approx 12 yes, but the short case i think uh, history can be made very short i think cutlery time is yes. on madam as madam said it's a short case okay. confirm to significant positive history and then you can go with the examination okay okay uh in a pedigree is a fourth in a order in elder one elder brother have a, a congenital heart disease in the form of hole in the heart but no proper history available and your younger brother also have some congenital heart disease but no papers or no history available and to summarize the history uh, he is a 7 year old male child presented with a chest pain on admission for past one year and jinal initially nyc class 2 but progressed to nyc class 3 for the past 3 months along with right sided neck pulsation for the past 3 months and initially on exertion now even at rest for the past one month okay tell us your possibilities after history ma'am i am considering a uh, uh, congenital heart disease in the form of a uh, left ventricular output tract obstruction uh, like asvtr or hcm another possibility might be a right ventricular output or obstruction in the form of pulmonary stenosis or double chamber right ventricle or maybe a congenital coronary anomaly so how do you explain neck pulsations in the second and third diagnosis that you made ma'am uh, in a uh, pulmonary stenosis patients may have a uh, giant a waves which may be uh, seen uh, on a mirror as a right side neck pulsation and, and congenital coronary anomaly patients uh it's not difficult isn't it it is very difficult very difficult is there any history of nocturnal angina no ma'am no history of nocturnal angina or any night episodes of pain after sleeping Why so, this question was asked of nocturnal angina, Doctor Gora? Why do you yes, think the question is important here, ma'am? Because of uh, sir, because of AR in patients with AR, they have correct. nocturnal angina. Correct, correct, correct. So how do you say that? Uh, on what basis can you say that this is R L V O T or R V O T obstruction? Because uh, there has to be some. Uh, some differentiation in two from the history or clinical picture yes sir based on sir only chest pain we can not rule out any rvot or lv obstruction uh, as per the history but if there is any associated symptoms that that can differentiate like dyspnea on exertion which can present in lv obstruction but uh, uh, easy fatigability is present in rvot obstruction patient And not dyspnea as per se. So these two. How common is to children present with the classical angina? In no, I I see described. How many children present with the classical angina? I can't describe. Only ten per only ten percent of patients present with classical angina sir. In congenital age. In which conditions? In congenital age only sir. Can you can you can you enumerate the causes of chest pain, which is cardiac, in children besides the one that you've listed here? Yes, ma'am. Uh, besides this, ma'am, a uh, patient may have alcapa. That's congenital coronary anomaly. Yes, yes, ma'am. Another, ma'am, 
कावासाकी डिसीज बिकॉज ऑफ कोरोनरी एन्यूरिजम ओके और पेशेंट और पेशेंट में है तक हैज वाइट्राइटिस इन द फॉर्म ऑफ ऑस्टियल कोरोनरी इन्वॉल्वमेंट यस मैम जस्ट पेन आई बेसिकली आस ओनली एंजाइनल चेस्ट पेन चेस्ट पेन व्हिच इज कार्डियक इनोरेजन चिल्ड्रन related to cardiac rupture sinus opal salva good yes, aortic yes. dissection very important you know something that we yes. don't even think about aortic yes. dissection we always think about that there are others in the chat box severe ms with severe ph i would think that's a very low possibility but yes rsov dissection of aorta and yes. mvp as you said bicuspid aortic valve with severe as so these are the causes of chest pain rpot obstruction producing angina or chest pain is a little rare. unusual rare very rare very rare yes, yes. Very yes. Rare. so uh, pulmonary embolism yes pulmonary but that's usually embolism. in the lungs usually more in the periphery of one side not really uh, typically mid mid part of the chest and also you should remember angina of hypercholesterolemia of familial homozygous hypercholesterolemia yes. can also give you yes. angina yes from they present with as and pulmonary artery disease right 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 okay so uh, go to your next slide yes ma'am okay myocarditis somebody has written myocarditis does not produce pain by itself it's mostly the pericarditis that is responsible for chest pain yes myocarditis can have this pain no myocarditis pure myocarditis does not get chest pain myopericarditis can give you pulmonary hypertension can give you chest pain yes okay yes ma'am on a uh, general examination um, patient was conscious oriented and cooperative anthropometry height was 93 cm weight 14.5 kg bmi was 16.8 Arm span 86 and upper segment lower segment ratio was 1.1. Mean tissue nutrition was normal and general examination was unremarkable. No pallor exterior sinus is clubbing lymphadenopathy or any edema. And second spine was normal. Temperature was normal by palpation. Pulse was 98 per minute regular rhythm, normal volume, no radial radial and radial femoral dealing, no spatial character and normal RT wall. All peripheral pulses equally palpable. And no carotid ray. Respiratory was 28, 22 per minute regular thoracic abdominal, and BP was 100 by 72 in both upper limbs and 112 by 74 in both lower limbs in supine position. SpO2 was 99 percent in all four limbs, and JVP, which was elevated 7 centimeter above sternal angle in sitting position, and probably CV wave with normal wide descent, and no peripheral signs of infective endocarditis and aortic recirculation. Is CV waves are prominent or normal? Yes, ma'am. I have a video, ma'am. Mm -hmm. CV waves were well, very prominent. So then, why descent will be prominent, no? Automatically. Yes. You, if you have a wave, there will be descent also. What are you trying to do here in the video? Ma'am, I am compressing the CV, uh, uh, compressing the uh, internal jugular vein to differentiate from carotid pulse. So, do you compress to differentiate it from an artery? Uh, no, sir. No, ma'am. What do you do? How do you differentiate a vein from an artery? Ma'am, we uh, generally compress the uh, upper part of the uh, supraclavicular portion at the uh, origin. Why should of, you? Why the, should you compress? I don't understand. Why should you compress to differentiate the vein from the artery? Any other way you can uh, you can you any other method? You, sir, we can uh, uh, we can feel. See, 
I mean, you just have to put your hand on it to palpate. Yeah. The arterial yeah. pulsations will be we felt, can. whereas we no, you are compressing. Sure, you are compressing. I can see that. You are not supposed to do that. That's not a very safe thing to do. I have just, just applied a light pressure. No, you. There is no need for you to apply pressure. Just if pulsations are palpable, it's arterial. Yeah. You yeah. just have to put your finger on top of that. That's all. Your finger will. I mean, your pulsations will tell you. Whether you are feeling the pulsations or not on the finger tip, you are clearly yes, yes. compressing. Please don't do that. Okay. okay. And uh, you said C and V waves were very prominent. That's what you said. Yes. Sir. So then, why this end has to be no? It has to be prominent because okay. it has to run off. And and please don't make the patient look to the other side. You have to let the patient head in the middle because that way you are actually making sternomastoid very. Prominent. Okay, ma'am. Actually, in the video, you are able to see the some head uh, knobbing or bobbing also. So some people will say the systolic uh, uh, knobbing and as well as the diastolic knobbing. Can you say the causes for that? Yes, I mean patients they are they can have a uh, systolic knobbing. Systolic in systolic knobbing due to. Uh, In patients with aortic ascending aortic aneurysm, they can have a uh, neck pulsation. The systolic knobbing is a very prominent in the case of aortic regurgitation. What that sign is called? Multiple body correct. D muscle. So it's written in the chat box. Yes. D muscle sign. Yes, yes, and D muscle sign. Okay, so this you think is venous and not arterial? Yes, ma'am. It was okay. better seen than felt. No, that's okay. That's your interpretation. You should just say that these are venous pulsations. Okay, go ahead. Yes. On inspection, yes, it was normal. Equilibrium normal. Apex simple. Bed seen in the fourth intercostal space at two centimeter lateral to left midclavicular line, occupying more than one intercostal space, and it was diffuse. An RV type, and no epigastric pulsation seen, no sinus sinus is or dilated vein. Inspective findings were confirmed. An apex base was palpable in fourth intercostal space, a two centimeter lateral to midclavicular line, occupying more than one intercostal space, diffuse and continuous with left parasternal impulse and lateral retraction. And grade three parasternal hip was present, which was synchronous with the apex, and trail which is systolic. In the second and third left intercostal space, and no liver uh, pulsation, no hypertomegaly, no pulsation in liver. Are, are you saying that the apex is RV type? Yes, ma'am. Put that out. Please put that. No, that you have to commit that yes, it is sir. RV type. Yes. On percussion, tympanic node in the left hypogondium, dull in the right hypogondium. Left heart border corresponds to apex. Right heart border. Two centimeter from right parietal line, and the left second ICS is dull. On auscultation, S1 is normal, S2 is single. There were no S3 or S4 or other half down third. Uh, ejection systolic murmur of grade five by six, medium pitch, low dura long duration, leg picking, crescendo decrescendo. Base third is second and third left intercostal space, parietal region with diaphragm of stethoscope in sitting position. And increasing with inspiration and lying down, uh, suggestive of ejection systolic murmur, and the pan systolic murmur of grade three by six, high pitch, blowing at the lower left channel border on radiating base heart with diaphragm, increasing with inspiration and leg rising and decreasing on supine and standing. It corresponds to the tricuspid regurgitation, and no murmur in axilla and back, and no other continuous murmur heard. Liver, liver, ma'am, no, uh, no pulsation, no palpable. Liver not enlarged. Not enlarged. Okay. What's the characteristic of my my I've drawn? So no additional sounds. Definitely no additional sounds. No sounds. No sounds. Nothing. The no S three, no S four, no click. So what are you showing? The ejection systolic murmur is late picking. 
in your yes, diagram sir. go back to your diagram yes yes you're showing late was, picking what, what does that mean sir because of uh, severe obstruction the murmur do get uh, so the, is the length of the murmur and late picking that decides the severity that's what yes, you want sir. to say Yes, a long, loud, and late picking murmur. That is is the thrill responsible? Uh, thrill is important for uh, in severity of the lesion, or yes, only sir. intensity important, or it's only length of the murmur and late picking. The so length and length of the murmur and late picking is very very important. Ha, okay, all right. Next, Correct. next slide. Next slide. Other system was unremarkable. Next, your diagnosis. Ma'am, my provisional clinical diagnosis would be uh, tetanus follicular levocardia in the form of asymptomatic pericardial heart disease, RV atrial obstruction in the form of likely severe valvular pulmonary stenosis with intact ventricular septum, and in the right heart failure, normal sinus rhythm, and no evidence of infective endocarditis or anemia. And currently in NYC class three. You haven't mentioned anything about TR here. You had a murmur of TR. Yes, yes, ma'am. So yes, that should come. Yes. How yes, much TR yes. you think? Mild, moderate, severe? Ma'am, moderate, moderate TR. Yes. Why not severe? Uh, because ma'am, the intensity was grade three by six. But you have a JVP which is going yes. seven centimeter, very prominent CV wave. So uh, I would say you should say severe TR. The other thing is about RV right ventricular function that you haven't mentioned. What do you think of is the right ventricular function? Uh, one more important sign to decide about the severity of the TR is the flow across the flow murmur across the tricuspid valve. Also, if you have an associated MDM of the tricuspid valve, then also will say the more severe. Yes, ma'am. And because you said the children, other uh, three, two siblings has uh, some problem. So what uh, syndromic associations you wanted to see? It is worth mentioning in the final diagnosis, there is no syndromic association. So what syndromes you would like to see? Um, uh, uh, as per the HTN examination, I would like to consider a Nunan syndrome, uh, Alagile syndrome, William syndrome, uh, Rubella uh, embryopathy, uh, leopard syndrome. These are the very common syndromes which are associated with the RV atrial obstruction in the form of a valvular PS. How did we fix the diagnosis as valvular PS? You didn't see anything for valve, no? And the murmur was in the third space. Murmur, you said it was more in the third space, was much lower down. Could it be something the murmur, else? Yes, sir. Murmur was, murmur was best started to second and third intercostal space. So I'm thinking of valvular pulmonic stenosis. No, why not infundibular? In why not infundibular? Because you have no click. Yes. Yeah, you because said the thrill, is, thrill was in the third space. Yes. Infundibular pulmonic stenosis have been murmur at the third and fourth intercostal space. And they no, have but why thrill. there is no click then? Why do you think the click is why click is absent in a pulmonary stenosis case? Ma'am, because uh, uh, because of this plastic pulmonary valve, they so don't it has, It's not here. No, you. that's what I'm saying. Your diagnosis has to be complete. Why should we be asking you about this plastic pulmonary valve? You have to yes. say severe valvular PS with severe TR with, I don't know, about RV function, you still haven't committed. What is the RV function like? Um, RV function, uh, RV would be dysfunctional because of uh, severe TR. So you need to write that also, no? Because that will make the case uh, urgency of the situation much better if you write RV dysfunction. In an obstructive yes. lesion, having a ventricular dysfunction is a very important feature that you should not miss. Yes. And then you want to say it is dysplastic valve. If you want to say that, is he nunans? Uh, no, ma'am. There was no syndromic features like for stretcher or wave neck or torsis or any hypertension. No, he is not no no. No, I am asking you nunans. Is he nunans? Not nunans. Not nunans. Not nunans. Okay, so dysplastic pulmonary valve in non nunan is even rarer. Yes, ma'am. Very rare. And why you don't have a liver when you have a JVP of 7 cm? Ma'am, um, that is unlikely because I have palpated two, three times. But I have not. No, I am asking you what could be the reason. Why you have palpated, I am not denying the finding. I am not saying is incorrect. You need to explain. 
मैम बिकॉज ऑफ जेवीपी मे बी बिकॉज ऑफ प्रिफरेंस स्ट्रीमिंग ऑफ जेट इन टू द एस बी सी एंड वी आर गिविंग वी आर हैविंग ए जेवीपी Do you think RA pressure is raised or not raised? Uh, What is the RA pressure? My mm-hmm. RA pressure would be higher side because JVP is above seven centimeter. Give us an estimate of RA pressure. What do you think is the RA pressure? You can actually mm-hmm. calculate. Yes, seven plus five plus seven. It may be around eight mm Hg. Around ten. Twelve divided by one point three six will be more like ten. Ten or nine. So, if the RA pressure is elevated, then liver also should get congested. Yes. Wherever the TR jet is going, doesn't matter. Yes. So, I don't know why liver is not covered. Did you check the upper border of liver? Yes, ma'am. Upper border of liver was in the fifth into one sixty. So, liver span? Liver span was ma'am eight centimeter. Is it normal? Liver span normal or increase? Because sometimes liver may enlarge. Upwards, and you may not be able to feel it. So you need yes, to actually ma'am. look at the liver span and see if it is elevated or not. Yes, ma'am. It was seven to eight centimeter, and according to age, it was normal. Not enlarged. Not enlarged. That is an odd finding, no? JVP being elevated so much, seven centimeter, and no liver. Yes, ma'am. It could be the other way around that liver is enlarged, the JVP is not elevated. When you treat somebody, sometimes the JVP goes away, but the liver stays enlarged. But what you are telling us is actually reverse of that. Yes. Ma'am. Okay. Why second heart sound is single? Then because of dysplastic and dysplastic pulmonary valve, P two will be very short or may may be absent in severe. CVRPS. So, so, so I think if you are so convinced about this plastic pulmonary valve, you should write it. Yes. Ma'am. Because normally valvular PS doesn't behave like this. There will be a click. Yes, ma'am. And the S and the P two is delayed, soft, but yes. is heard. Yes, so there will be a wide split. Uh, there will be wide variable split with soft P two. So both these findings are not there. Therefore, you want to explain it by being it being a dysplastic pulmonary valve. So, therefore, it should come in your diagnosis. Maybe you yes. can put a query dysplastic pulmonary valve so that these questions you can answer better then. And also put RV dysfunction always in an obstructive. In fact, in all diagnoses, you should try and put the ventricular function. Especially when you have a TR. Yeah. Yes. In an obstructive lesion, very very important to talk about the ventricular function because your your management will. Or uh, let's say time of management might vary. Yes, and with tardive dysfunction. The patient has CVD and tardive dysfunction. Can it produce ventricular pressure? Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. If the patient has significant tardive dysfunction, can it produce a significant ventricular pressure? No, sir. Grade three peristaltic will will be present in with a normal RV function. If it is will be very dysfunctional RV, then RV you may be grade one or two. Not more. Not that's all. Uh, so, you should be careful in commenting RV dysfunction and the, when you comment on grade grade three parasomnia also. Okay. Go ahead. What is the effect of the RV dysfunction on the S two? Ma'am, with RV dysfunction, the S two will be. Uh, S two uh, will be up, uh, widely split, and there will be uh, in with the severe right heart failure. There won't be any. Uh, uh, this will. This would be a wide split with a variable split with RV dysfunction. And if there is a, a very high, uh, se- very severe right heart dysfunction, then it will be a fixed uh, A two P two, wide and fixed. So the split will be helpful in addition to the. Uh, rise JVP and everything to know about the RV dysfunction and the presence of the S3 also RV S3 that is also due to to you whether RV dysfunction is significant or not. If it is a um, uh, pure RV OT obstruction and RV dysfunction, is do you expect any other clinical sign to be present, especially exertional, if the RV dysfunction is there? Do you expect any cyanosis, mild cyanosis to be present? Yes, due to PFO stenting, they may get cyanosis. Yeah, I think uh, fixed second heart sound third 
RB third R sound are very good features to say that there is RB dysfunction. But uh, these findings you can miss. What is important is cardiomegaly. You have an RA which is jutting on the right side. You have an apex which is two centimeter outside the mid-trabecular line and a JVP. There is no question about RB dysfunction being present there. So I think these are gross findings that are very helpful. And in a in a OPD in a day to day practice should depend on these findings more because you might miss RBS three, you might miss fixed second heart sound, but you will never miss cardiomegaly and JVP. Yes. Okay. What do you want to see? X ray, ECG, echo. Um, I would like to see ECG first. Why? Why? Uh, Dr. Saxena, would, you asked one very pertinent clinical question, which he didn't okay. answer about, about the absence of a click. He said only yes. about the dysplastic valve. Otherwise, yes. as well, in a very severe pulmonary yes. stenosis, there may not yes. be a click because of the very severe pulmonic stenosis. That, that needs 70. to be said. Yes, yes. <laughs> Those patients who have gradient more than 70, they may not have a uh, vascular click. I I don't think uh, you, I mean, you can say 70 gradient is present in all severe PS. Yes. The click is preserved in most of them. Only in extreme severe cases, you may miss it. But click is generally present and that is how you localize the obstruction at the valve. Yes, yes when you have very severe PS, when you have ventricular dysfunction, when you have low cardiac output because of this, yes, click may not be heard. Or very quite elevated LV, RV diastolic pressure. In that case, there will be a premature opening of the pulmonary valve. That is yes. exactly what, what is the why there is an absence of eclipse sometimes. Yes, due to uh, due to strong RV at uh, atrial contract. Okay, you you proceed. It's already we are getting late. Yes. So uh, why do you want ECG? Why not X-ray chest? Ma'am, I want to see uh, pattern of RVH and systemic pressure according to the RV. There will be, be RVH, there will be RVH, you have a grade 3 heap, you have an RV apex. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So X-ray will, will give you a lot of features. If you are thinking... We can differentiate, uh, though it is very clear from history and examination, which is dysplastic, but it can give idea about dysplastic and valvular PS based on ECG. So, okay, we will we'll give you ECG then. Anuna, are you showing the issue? Anuna, Anuna? Gaurav, you stop sharing. Gaurav, you stop sharing. Yes. Gaurav, you have to stop sharing. Yes. You are still sharing. We can see your screen. I have no option. Then no, no, go up. There are view options. Then you can stop sharing. Green. Yes, sir. Move, move your cursor. Ah, that's right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Ma'am, this is a 12 lead ECG uh, taken at a 25 mm per second and 10 millivolt, 10 mm per millivolt, very standardized. And in this, we can see a uh, rate of 100, around 100. Per minute and rhythm is regular, fine rhythm. P wave is picked in lead V1 2 and uh, directly and say finding right atrial enlargement RBH with strain. Yes, sir. directly right say that. Okay, so what is, the, right the, what is the axis? What is the axis? Axis, uh, ma'am, axis is between around one se minus 170. Minus 170. Gaurav, is it minus it 170? So positive and lead AVF by physics. So no, what is the axis? What uh, is the axis? How much? Minus 180. Minus 180. Minus you think it is left axis then? Is it left or right axis? Gaurav, is it left or right axis? Left and right axis in axis. We can say about the clockwise and transverse loop. No, no, I think don't make it more complicated. Very simple question. Is it left axis deviation, right axis deviation? Or you don't know? 
just three three answers one of the three we are not asking first you the loop negative loop. first negative if we have positive what is the it's a right axis isn't it what is the qrs in one and avl have a look at it carefully hello garo are you there hello hello ah, yes yes Gaurav? yes 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 sir so it is no, plus 180 plus yes sir ah. plus 180 your <laughs> because your lead one is totally negative totally yes how can it be left positive. no it can't be although Manita. you should have the ecg at a half standardized uh, level because you are sort of merging the waves so it's difficult have, to see the avf yes we have taken we have taken good uh, now uh, now i think avf is almost biphasic or little on the plus side so it could be plus 70 or plus 65 or uh, 18 plus 180 but it is it is it is not negative i don't know why did you say negative you were trying to probably fit in into dysplastic valve i guess no my mate just at a 170 180 plus yes, 170 180 but plus it makes all the difference in your diagnosis if you make it minus then it will be a different diagnosis altogether okay what is the rv pressure you wanted to see no for rv yes, estimating rv pressure but let's show the other one half standardized wala yes ha ah, because at least yahan pe dikh raha hai sara okay so what is rv pressure and there are This small uh, there are right. how do you estimate rv pressure from ecg in a ps intact septum मैम Full so, standardization, is it right? It will be around. Yes, ma'am. It will be around. Yes, ma'am. It will be around two fifty, ma'am. Yeah, two twenty five or two two hundred maybe. But then you've got STT changes. Therefore, you have to think about very high RV pressure because you've got strain pattern. So this is RAD, RAD with strain. Okay. What is the what is the rhythm? Just see the last uh, lead to rhythm strip. Any change in the rhythm patterns or the QRS morphology? In between, sir, there is changing in amplitude of the QRS. What is the sign to say that is the suprasystemic RV pressure and ECG? Sir, we can assume uh, based on this, we can say that the interventricular uh, septum is intact. That's why RV is becoming so sort of supra systemic. I'm asking, what is the sign and ECG to make it as a supra systemic RV pressure? Just look at B1 and comment about what Madam is asking. Uh, If you have a presence of the Q wave, yes, ma'am. Q R waves are in supra systemic RV. RV pressures. If they are present, and plus in the CCT. Okay. Is on top two wave, ma'am. Yes. So, shall we go for X-ray? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So this is a case X-ray. Ah, uh, please yeah, describe the positive finding in X-ray. Yes, sir. There is a sir uh, on right side, right side heart border. There is a RA enlargement because the distance between the. So there is a mark cardiomegaly. You start yes, with cardiomegaly. No, you don't start with right atrium. First, you have to say how much cardiomegaly, if there is any. Yes, ma'am. There is a huge cardiomegaly. Mm -hmm. The CT ratio is more than point five, point fifty five for the age, and, and there is a RA enlargement in the the apex is uh, of RV type. Okay, go ahead. And pulmonary bay. And sir, pulmonary bay is not full, sir. 
not so pulmonary so pulmonary. what does that mean uh, pulmonary artery is not enlarged so there is no post stenotic dilatation yes sir but there is no what bay also there is no bay there is no bay also no bay also yes so how do you say that sir in valvular pulmonic stenosis uh, patients have uh, iso uh, post stenotic dilatation but in dysplastic valve they have normal size pulmonary arteries or hypoplastic pulmonary arteries so this might be the reason okay 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 what else comment on the vasculature uh, vasculature is mam normal in both the rv and lv uh, right and left lung and there is no left atrial enlargement no double atrial shadow no elevation of left mid bronchus and there is gross yeah. rv enlargement what is vascularity you said vascularity is vascularity mam looks like normal mam this really? is under exposed film do you think so this is slight over exposed i think over exposed vascularity is very thin very thin mm. yes, it's on the reduced side mm. so if the patient is not blue but the vascularity seems less what does it tell you can it happen no what ma'am vascularity is reduced but patient is not blue what does it tell you in this particular case of severe valvular ps reduced vascularity but patient is not blue you check the saturation yes ma'am what are the causes what are the condition which can lead to this you said na hypoplastic pulmonary yes, well, hypoplastic pulmonary arteries yes so hypoplastic lung can so if you have no cyanosis but ps with failure this would indicate low cardiac output the yes. vascularity is likely to be I less if there is low cardiac output or else it will be less if there is right to left happening at the pfo level in that case the child is going to be blue which is not blue. the case here yes. so remember low cardiac output can also give you reduced vascularity you can get sometimes that kind of vascularity in a very severe advanced lv dysfunction also you expect pvh but you see black lungs that will be indicative of low output okay okay go ahead this is the lateral chest x ray film showing fullness of retrosternal space uh, suggesting rv enlargement and Correct. there is no there is no uh, pulmonary artery dilatation seen in this area i would say you should probably not comment on that mm -hmm. because pulmonary arteries are well seen when there is good flow into them if there is very little flow you may not see pulmonary arteries even if they are big yes yes ma'am okay describe in this sir we can see situs solitus uh, aorta is on the left and ivc on the right and in this image we can the the compression and uh, compression of ivc on respiration and no ivc dilatation hmm. next view please hmm. describe am i audible sir yes yes, yes. yes. the road describe Hello, am I audible, sir? Yeah, 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 Yes. Sir, am I audible, sir? Yeah, you're you are audible. Go on. Yeah, we keep losing you, Gaurav. Ah, I'm not sure. I think there's something wrong with your connection. You want to log off and log on again? Yes, I'm. Currently, I'm audible now. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. 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 Please yeah, go ahead. You are audible. Go ahead. Yeah, 
whenever you ask us you are audible to us but other times you might be asking we don't hear so harnish can no. try ma'am yeah let's uh, harnish would you like to yes, take ma'am. it yes ma'am i'll take it ma'am. so we see the apical four chamber view uh, significantly dilated right atrium and right ventricle with rv hypertrophy and uh, a tr jet frequency which is at least moderate in intensity you could also talk of the rv function in the same breath i'll rv function appears to be reduced yeah. it is quite reduced actually quite. it's the you know it's the it's the rocking movement of the heart and not really a contract mm-hmm. okay this is highly underfilled let's lalb are highly underfilled mm-hmm. yeah next ma'am am i audible ma'am right now yes 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 sir yes tell us ma'am this is a apical four chamber view showing the trz and the mm-hmm. peak tr velocity uh, mm-hmm. with gradient of 1 39 mm of mercury okay good next this is the mem tapsy of the right ventricle it is showing 2.2 cm but it can be it can be a fallacious because of uh, it's just a rocking movement it is appearing a rocking movement yeah. in the right ventricle. so whatever tapsy you tell me it's rv dysfunction go ahead yeah yes, yes. <laughs> Ma'am, it's fractional area change. You got fractional area shortening. Yes, it is twelve point two percent. In twelve point two percent. Next. Next. And this is the apical four chamber view showing the Doppler across a mitral valve and the aortic valve. Mm-hmm. They both the same. Okay. There are there is no regurgitation and turbulence across the aortic valve. This is a plaque view showing uh, hugely dilated right ventricle and uh, underfilling uh, compressed left ventricle. Normal size LV. RV is pushed into LV. RV inter interventricular right ventricular hypertrophy. Mm. Next, yeah, Next. this one. Yes. Yes, RV is pushed into LA. Yes, short axis. Dara, you are. Are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am audible, sir. Yes. Yeah, we are. We are able to hear you. Just go ahead. Describe. Yes. Yes, sir. This is the short axis view at the great artery level, showing mm. the pulmonary valve, mm. which is. Uh, uh, is a uh, lip plates are thick and and the annulus is molar and in the right side we can see the doppler across the pulmonic valve there is uh, the turbulence across pulmonic valve is the valve dysplastic or mm. do you want to see more view of the valve i want to see more because there is post nodal dilatation Yes, is there a significant postnatal dilatation? Hmm. Uh-huh. Yes. I, I think the valve is doming and it is not dysplastic. This is what appears to me. Okay. Mm-hmm. Maybe Dr. Anune would have seen it better. But views mm-hmm. were views uh, views were very difficult to make the map. Mm-hmm. Uh, good views that because you usually dilated rv right 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 but whatever leaflets you are showing doesn't look yes. dysplastic yes, and then there is view. some amount of uh, post stenotic dilatation also mm-hmm. and uh, let's see and the le- gradient mm-hmm. and leaflets appear to be pliable yeah so this is p uh-huh. okay 124 or yeah. 124 gradient okay. Yeah, is the gradient across pulmonic valve? Mm. Yes. Anything else we have? Mm. Uh, no annulus. Okay, that's about nine annulus. Annulus size was nine. Yeah. So a little smallish for a seven-year-old. Anything else we have? Uh, annulus? No, ma'am. This is that. Okay. Okay. So what is to be done? So what is your diagnosis finally? My final diagnosis. Will be a, a severe valvular pulmonic stenosis, 
not okay. dysplastic man um look like this does but no it's not dysplastic it see no, dysplastic not... valve will have some degree of rigor also which is not there and the valve leaflets look the usual kind so i don't think it's a dysplastic pulmonary valve correct agree severe valvular ps with severe rb dysfunction and severe tr is what you have yes ma'am severe tr with severe rb dysfunction with integral ventricular septum okay so what is to be done for the ma'am for the patient we go for a balloon pulmonary valve dilatation when will you do it as soon as possible because that is it it's already been i'm sure it has been done already uh, no actually ma'am our lab we will do it tomorrow ma'am our lab was not yeah. to right right so basically you need to understand that this should be done as soon as possible there is not yes. much point in giving him you know diuretics or or dobutamine or dopamine mm. like you usually given uh, dysfunctional ventricle here it's not going to work so the only option for him is to open the valve open the valve sir, so tell us what balloon, balloon would you yeah yeah sir yeah. 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 common balloon, balloon would you choose what is the formula sorry sir, but, sir commonly used balloon is a tricyclic balloon sir mm. and we Uh, nice. Size the balloon according to the pulmonary valve annulus uh, as per uh, angio angiocardiogram, and we use. Oh, you you are going to measure point. it. You are going to measure it on angio. Why? Right? Eco has told you it's nine mm. It was shown to you. Are you not happy with the image or what? No, no. no. Generally, you don't measure it angio because it is going to take time. You have to have balloon in your cath lab beforehand, and it's yes. better to go by eco. Yes, Unless you find very discrepant annulus on the angio, sometimes or the window is not good, that's fine. Otherwise, generally we use echo. So, what balloon okay. you would use is a nine mm annulus size. Nine point four. Nine mm annulus, ma'am. We use up to one twenty percent of the annulus size. So, we what balloon do you want to use? Um, Tyshek balloon, ma'am. No, no. What size? What size, ma'am? Um, In this case, I'm nine point five mm. It is okay, but because of RV dysfunction, we will uh, we will use uh, ma'am uh, in staging. We earlier use smaller balloon, then we will stage and uh, we will complete the process in two three stages. What uh, what additional thing will you use when you do a BPV in this? What's that? What additional uh, thing will you use when you dilate the valve? During the dilatation, do you want to paste the RV? Yes, sir. Yes, you are saying yes. yes. That means why do you want to paste? The pasting we use for the uh, L aortic valve implantation, aortic balloon dilatation, not for RV. There is really not much need. Also, in a dysfunctional ventricle, generally balloon doesn't slip, so there is really uh, no point of uh, trying to pace. In fact, if you pace this bad ventricle, you might get into more hypotension. Yeah, be very careful in pacing. Yeah. yeah. What precaution would you observe? What would you want your team to look at when you are actually inflating the balloon across the pulmonary valve? What might happen to the patient? Very good. Ah, ma'am. Ma'am, pulmonary annulus is small, so it can get ruptured. Patient may get. No, you are using the right. You are not using oversized balloon. You are using nine mm balloon or ten, maybe at best. But once you are inflating, in fact, not even inflating. Sometimes you are even crossing the valve, and the patient develops bradycardia. What does that mean to you? Yes. How are you going to take care of it? One dilution you use the contrast. So all these are important because you are immediately deflate and so dilate. You have yeah. to be ready with everything. Just crossing the valve sometimes produces apnea. Okay. That is something in balloon pulmonary valve, and that's why some people in such a situation would put the patient in GA. Just to be very sure that patient's breathing has been taken care of. But otherwise, critical PS. the moment you cross sometimes even with a wire 
they just develop total apnea and that is shown on the scope as bradycardia because you are not looking at the breathing so the patient develops bradycardia and then you wonder what happened actually patients bradycardia is secondary to respiratory depression so you need to be very very careful in a critical ps like this one that when you are crossing you are ready with the whole assembly and you just quickly take it through and dilate and you could do it in stages also because some of the adults ps we have seen may go into pulmonary edema if you dilate with a big balloon but he is a child you might be able to get away by dilating once maybe a 10 m balloon or so so that's a precaution which is different from other balloon dilatation like avbd and all you are worried about arrhythmia and hypotension pvbd you should be watching his breathing kadiyane okay think that's it thank you dr bang shall we close yeah yeah i think uh, uh we have come to the end of the session so we could give uh, uh, marks to gorov gorov he's done yes. a good job very good <laughs> very good job and uh, both the uh, presenter dr harnish and dr gaurav both have done excellent job both are passing today for for us for this exam and keep it up and improve your presentation if you can a little bit gaurav harnish was excellent gaurav little bit confident uh, you have to keep in your mind that you have to present confident sure. you, you hear me gaurav yes sir yes sir I am yeah. audible. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, yeah, you are audible. You are. Of course, your neck was also a problem a little bit. I understand that. So it may not be totally that uh, your presentation, but neck also is also contributed to disturbances. Okay, so thank you very much for both of both of your presentation. Excellent uh, long case, very elaborately prepared uh, investigation, including cat. and uh, even ct scan was there so it was very interesting presentation and we all enjoyed and learned a lot from the whole presentation we believe the audience uh, making many pg students who are present may have learned a lot then short case also was very well presented very well prepared and very interesting actually uh, it was uh, because of absence of ejection click there was a issue of uh, but it was because of the failure rb failure ejection click was not audible but it is basically not dysplastic valve well. it's a proper uh, uh, valvular right pulmonary pulmonic stenosis and very good presentation and lastly coming to the coming to the our uh, keynote address uh, by dr guha excellent talk on pulmonary hypertension and he has covered all aspects of pulmonary hypertension be it pre capillary post capillary and combination of the two and various aspects of treatment including medical and intervention treatment i think it was an excellent session overall and uh, all faculty we are very very grateful for your uh, contribution and spending your sunday evening with us that's very important and uh, very grateful to all of you and grateful to all our, all our attending pgs and uh, next class will be after two months maybe fifth september little earlier than that we'll keep it on fifth september this time the next class so just keep it in mind and uh, of course format is same long case short case and keynote address so this is how we plan it we'll discuss and decide about next case okay thank you very much everybody Thank you. 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 Thank you.